when I started uh, collecting modules, I wanted to make sure that every sort of synthesis was represented in my rack mount. Uh, I mean, the whole idea of all these modules were, instead of like full-size keyboards and synthesizers against my wall, uh, which I just didn't have the space for, it was a way to collect and have access to every type of synthesis making hardware device in a super compact form without sacrificing a whole lot. Elements down here, for example, is a hardware modal synthesizer or a synthesis based on an exciter resonator physical modeling sort of thing, but really it was an alternate way to collect synths in a space conscious way. Uh, and dare I say even an economic way compared to the costs of actual vintage synths that are out there. So I mean, I would love to have a Moog One or a Jupiter X even, because they're obviously amazing. I just decided that Eurac modules made better space sense wise and amount of diversity I can get out of it. So let me know what you guys think about this concept. Does it make sense to you guys? Uh, are you guys doing something similar or had similar thoughts? Uh, let me know. So this is my all mutable instrument skiff. Well, not all, since uh, some of you with a sharp eye will note that these are one new IntelliGel uh, modules. That's because as far as I know, mutable instruments themselves do not make one new modules. The one new after later modules are in fact modeled after the open source mutable instruments code. So that could have been an option, but I felt that the one new IntelliGel faceplate design and aesthetic just match the uh, mutable modules a whole lot better. I'll quickly go over these since they're not technically mutable modules. So here in the corner, the IntelliGel 1U noise tool, which I went over in my other all IntelliGel skiff video. So I won't get too much into it, but again, I use it as a, um, a loose clock source and a noise generator, super useful utility. Here though, is something that's super useful in this case. Um, it's a four channel attenuator, attenuverter with a switch to make it either uni or bipolar. You can trim LFOs, group modulate other CV points, and just straight up mix signals. So again, very useful here. Okay, so the one new multi-effects admittedly doesn't sound super great. It's not replacing my Strymon Blue Sky or the Eventide H90 anytime soon, but it's super useful in small doses to give it a little extra something. You know, it's always nice to put some signal through different reverb types, which gives the overall mix a bit more complexity. So in my experience, uh, you can almost apply the old adage of 
You can never have enough uh, VCAs to you can never have enough DSPs. You just kind of have to know that these one new DSPs have some limitations. Uh, they don't quite have the headroom and it probably won't stand up to critical listening. Uh, it goes same for this uh, Digiverb 1U as well. Not the best sounding verb, but you know, it's there as a backup or as a way to chain reverbs together uh, to get a little something extra. Which brings us to the pedal IO, which I also have in my IntelliGel skiff. Uh, the pedal IO here is to do the real heavy uh, lifting, right? Since I can patch in external pedals like the Eventide H90 or the beefy Strymon delays or other reverbs as your mainstay uh, DSP. And thanks to the way the pedal IO takes advantage of these uh, built-in quarter-inch uh, jacks on the uh, IntelliGel skiff, it's quite nice. So these two modules essentially are your CV audio mixer attenuators. Uh, Veil specifically uh, is your classic VCA, right? DC coupled, uh, so it allows LFOs and lower than audio rate signals for shaping, mixing, CV, and audio. And like many newbies, uh, when I planned out my early uh, modular rack systems, uh, being way too stingy with utility modules like VCAs, uh, which is again a classic mistake. Uh, now I make it a point to have a good amount of rack space just dedicated to uh, VCAs and utility modules. Uh, besides, I specifically need them when I need to dock these skiffs to my mothership back there. Now, Veils isn't as fancy as the IntelliJ Quad VCA, but it is a little cheaper if you can get them since Mutable Instruments is no longer. I think I mentioned this before in my earlier module videos where I make it a point to not repeat modules even if uh, they are VCAs if at all possible. So I got to have VCAs from various companies and each has their own spin on it and I'm super glad that I did. Marbles for me, uh, I've been using it more or less as a organized chaos generating gate trigger clock source with the ability for you to like twist knobs and, and perform how you like it you can sequence entire tracks with just this module. The thing that makes marbles work, of course, is the T and the X sections, right? Almost like the left brain and the right brain kind of vibe as how I sort of took it. The left section is like rhythmic and it's like locked and it's subdivided, it's logical. While the X is like fluid, smooth, random generating, more chaos. Uh, combine the two and you got this like amazing combo. Almost kind of like how all of music is made. Add this little jitter feature and it's even more interesting because you're now humanizing those generated signals by kind of offsetting things here and there. Elements, this is one of the widest modules I own and I have no regrets. It earns its place. I have one other physically modeled module in the form of Planck and I have to say of course Elements is like a, a towering giant compared to the Planck figuratively and uh, literally sort of. It's a modal synthesizer or synthesizer based on an exciter and a resonator or modeling physically the way sound works. You have your additive, subtractive, FM, and now modal synthesis. So in that sense, as I mentioned, my wall of Uroc modules essentially represent a wall of many different types of synthesis in a super compact form that's hardware. I've got plugins, but I've been more inspired by hardware as of late. So plugins for productivity, but hardware for inspiration. So Elements, man, this just sounds so good, so musical, so controllable. Just look at the possibilities with all these CV points. And uh, I love the built-in attenuators, which are so nice, by the way. This play audition button is always nice to have on these larger modules as well. Just great sounding musical module.
Blades probably don't need any introduction. Uh, and with the latest and greatest firmware update, a surprise that we got before the company closed its doors, uh, it's quite certainly uh, in my top 10, certainly top five recommended modules for newcomers. It's decidedly user-friendly, it makes sounds immediately, and with a quick CV pad, you can get a glimpse of all sorts of things, and you begin to taste what the whole Eurac Hoopla is all about. It's probably the quintessential modern module as well. It kind of should be in the dictionary, I think, if you look up what a Eurac module should be. Besides mats, I think plates uh, would definitely show up in that list. It's digital, so even at its most aggressive settings, uh, it has a, a bit of a, a filter sound, as it were. It's not like it's got some crazy unique character, but it's just such a great workhorse, uh, almost the perfect compact digital oscillator. I admit that I got this mainly because of the knob, uh, only to be slightly disappointed that it's plastic. Uh, I do know that there are some custom metal knobs and plates out there for warps, so maybe after this video, I'll think about doing it. Anyway, okay, so warps. Uh, modulation is kind of everything in modular, right? Uh, so warps is this cool little module that you can just kind of assign audio signals to do different things with different algorithms. I use it almost like a post audio signal processor, um, adding some cool modulation effects. I almost wish that the big knob and the a timbre knob, I wish they would be like switched because sometimes uh, it would be nice to be able to perform the timbre uh, element with the larger knob than the smaller knob. Uh, maybe there's a firmware that can do just that. I mean, it's modular after, right? Anything is possible. Uh, I specifically put the uh, warps on my right side of the module design so that, you know, again, you can perform it easily, be able to control it with the uh, right hand since I'm right handed. So it's very fitting that the uh, ripples uh, is next to warps and plates because it's such an expressive sounding multi-mode filter. You know, pair this with, with plates or even elements and you've got self an entire show. The input gain here can give you that uh, extra little saturation overdrive quality that uh, honestly I think a lot of the mutable instruments kind of need. Uh, so you can see this like it kind of has like a red band uh, around it. Uh, again, whether it's elements or plates, uh, Ripples adds that character and uh, special sauce to some of your more tamer, blander tones. Uh, it also immediately gets expressive as you can perform and uh, or modulate the frequency up. Uh, super, super fun. As I mentioned in my previous videos, uh, each module maker seems to have their own DNA like shine through as you interact with their entire product line. From having these simple jitter function to humanized marbles or these large knobs on elements always seem to have this profound emphasis on expressiveness or how quickly you can just get sounds out of uh, plates like banging on a piano. When you design anything, especially hardware, you can't just throw the kitchen sink at it. You have to choose what stays in and what stays out. Uh, and that says a lot about the maker's intent. And in this case, with mutable instruments, it's really true. It's profoundly musical, and it really earns the word instrument in its title. Thanks for watching.